Shalom everybody, as you can see it's quite bright uh, This is Drew from the Youth Commission and with me Maria Say hi Hi <laughs> um, Today for Laksa for Ajiwa we are at St. Joe Cathedral and we're going to see Father Galvin where he will share with us a bit more about Ash Wednesday and uh, yeah we're going to get out of the sun it's so bright Okay, hi Hello Father um, the first question, what is Ash Wednesday and why is it important? Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent in which we prepare ourselves spiritually for the celebration of Easter. This is a time that we reconcile ourselves with God and with one another through acts of prayers, fasting and works of charity as the Gospel reading on Ash Wednesday reminds us. On Ash Wednesday, we are reminded of our reality that we are dust and unto dust we shall return and that we are invited to repent and to believe in the Gospel as the priest sprinkles the blessed ashes on our forehead. As we begin this 40 days of Lenten journey, we are invited to find strength and hope in the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness taken from the Gospel of Luke, verse, chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. As Jesus had triumphed through the, all the earthly temptations, so too we find hope and strength from the temptation of Jesus that we too will overcome this temptation, our bodily um, desires, that we too can be spiritually renewed in this season of Lent. Then question two, who invented Ash Wednesday and why do we call it that? Ash Wednesday has been celebrated since the time of the Apostles and it was not recorded because um, Christianity was not an organised religion then until the Council of Nicaea in 325 when the Emperor uh, Constantine I convened this Council of Nicaea to formalise the celebration of Ash Wednesday and other liturgical celebration in the church. It was then, um, it was formalised because um, during that time, the Council of Nicaea, that was when Christianity became the official religion of the Christendom, the Roman Empire. So there had to be one um, standardised way of doing things in the church, in the Christendom. And that was when uh, we have what we call today the Ash Wednesday. Why it is called Ash Wednesday? It is because on that day, as we begin this time of spiritual renewal, we are reminded of that, the finality of ourselves, that we are dust and to dust we shall return. And that is why it is sprinkled on our forehead. Is Ash Wednesday mentioned in the Bible? What significant do the ashes have? Ash Wednesday per se is not mentioned in the Bible, but the practice of covering oneself with ashes as a sign of repentance and a sign of being sorrowful are found in the scriptures. For example, in Job chapter 42 verse 6, he was very remorseful, he was very sad because of all the what had happened to him and his children. So Job, as a sign of grieving, sat on ashes. In Jonah chapter 3 verse 6, speaks about how the king of Nineveh um, was very, very sorrowful because of his own sin and that he was in repentance. He dressed himself in sackcloth and sat on ashes also. And when the Lord saw all this outward sign of being sorry, being uh, grieving, that was when God changed uh, his anger, changed his um, hatred into love. That shows God is a compassionate God who through all this um, repentance, yeah, is always there to forgive, to love and to be compassionate and to offer us again salvation. So it has been um, one of the ways to show grievances as well as repentance in the scriptures. Through the ashes. Through the ashes. How are the ashes prepared? Blessed palms um, that was used on Palm Sundays 
the ones that we wave with and uh, we, we shout Hosanna, Hosanna. These palms are collected just before the Ash Wednesdays and burnt. And uh, the, uh, the sacristans, yeah, they will prepare these ashes and the priests on Ash Wednesday will bless these um, ashes using the formula, O God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive on our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observant of Lent, gain pardon for sins and newness of life, after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So that is how these ashes are blessed and they are what we call the sacramentals of the church. Mm, okay. When, when are they prepared for them? Uh, two days before or...? It can be done uh, like a month before, you know. Uh, it can be a few days before. It, all, it is all depending on the um, availability of the sacristans themselves. Yeah. There is no specific time for them to burn the ashes. During this COVID, uh, how will the priests put the ashes on the people? And how long do we need to keep the ashes on us? All right, usually um, in our tradition, uh, we will have uh, the ashes mixed with water and smudged on the forehead of um, each penitent who comes to receive this ashes but in view of the COVID restriction we are not able to do that now we will uh, sprinkle the ashes on the head yeah so that is the norm that we are adapting uh, in this time of COVID and as the priest um, sprinkles the ashes he will say remember you are dust and dust you shall return or he will say repent and believe in the gospel is there a time frame that we need to keep it there for that? Can we wash it like, in the evening? Oh yeah, or? you can wash it uh, any time you want. Um, uh, you don't have to put it on uh, for the rest of the day. Yeah, uh, Like for someone who sweat a lot like me, I'll just like smudge and it will be gone in no time. Yeah, So you don't have to keep it, you know, make it visible. It is for internal. Uh, it's a sign of repentance, yeah. You don't have to show it to the whole world or take photo with it and, you know, oh, look, look, I've, I've been to Ash Wednesday Masses and all that. Yeah. Is it a holy day of obligation? Is it a sin not to get ashes or go for a Mass on Ash Wednesday? To begin with, um, Ash Wednesday Mass is not a holy day of obligation in which you have to go for Mass. So if you do not go for Ash Wednesday Mass, actually, it is not a sin for you. And, uh, but it's funny to see that Ash Wednesday, you will see a lot of people coming to the church. Uh, churches everywhere will be filled to the brim. It shows that, yeah, we acknowledge that we are sinners, that we need repentance, that we, we want to change. We want to um, reconcile with God and one another. And recognizing this, yeah, the church is always full on, on, on Ash Wednesday and even during Sundays of Lent. So, yeah, it is a good sign that people are coming back to church also. Uh, because as we begin this season of Lent, a season of grace that we are, you know, encountering, experiencing this God who is loving, who is compassion, who loves us even as we are sinful. Yeah, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God, not even sin. Do you have a memory that comes to mind when you think of Ash Wednesday? For you, Father. I remember when I was in a seminary, you know, uh, or in a church, or when I was in the school, uh, we, we went to the church together for Ash Wednesday, and we will always compare you know, how big a cross that a person can get or how small a cross on the forehead. Yeah, that would be the, mo the most interesting thing about Ash Wednesday I can remember. But, of course, it is a time um, in the seminary also that there will be nothing on the table for breakfast 
and and dinner uh, and lunch it was it will be a strictly fasting and abstinence that as I grow up and as I, I, I was in the seminary was something very powerful for me um, yeah to begin this with the right um, how to call that um, yes you know so yeah can non-Catholics receive the ashes too? These blessed ashes are called sacramentals. They are blessed, they are used for Christians to experience that kind of grace in them. If a person who is not a Christian, a non-Catholic, they might not have the understanding or the disposition of having that ashes then I'd rather not give it to them yeah, uh, because it is not for show, not for, uh, you know, for social media or whatnot, but it is something external that has that internal um, effects. What are the things we are encouraged to do on Ash Wednesday and all throughout Lent? It is a day of fasting and abstinence. Fasting, meaning that we are allowed to take only one meal per day and abstinence means we uh, do not do, do not take what we enjoy, you know, doing or eating. Why are we doing that? Because we are filled with that sorrow, filled with that repentance that we really want to start anew and that is the meaning of that fasting and abstinence. And um, of course, throughout the season of Lent, what we can do is to go with D-A-P. That is Doa, Amalan Bae, Dan Puasa. Uh, that is the three pillars of Lent, which is fasting, uh, prayer and works of charity. So these works are external, but when we deny ourselves of our desire, of our bodily um, uh, cravings, you know, um, that is when we put God first instead of putting ourselves, me, myself and I. And that is when we can put others before us and that is where we can yeah, have that renewal um, of our Christian living. Thank you, Father. So, last, last part. Any closing words for uh, the young people or uh, whoever is watching this? Closing word. This is indeed a time of grace, a time of renewal, and we have not really experienced Lent, um, Ash Wednesday, Easter, uh, the Tridum, uh, in the way we used to have in the future, uh, in the past, because of the pandemic, we are not able to come to church, etc. But this year, this is the time when we can uh, come back to the church to really uh, to be uh, to enter into this spirit of Lent through um, the liturgy, stations of the cross, etc. Do come back to the church and uh, let God, yeah, um, move us uh, to this repentance, to this renewal, and have a blessed. Lent to all of you and may you continue to experience this God who is compassionate and love. Amen. This is Father Gelvin Richard Ngumbang from St. Joseph's Cathedral. This is Maria Mela from KYC. And this is Ju from KYC. Serving, Serving you laksa for our jiwa. jiwa. Selamat menjamu selera. Happy, Happy eating, eating, holy living, and a blessed Lent.